Hi, I'm Elissa, and you're watching Quinnipiac's A Day in the Life. Hi everyone, my name is Elissa Rubel. I'm a junior English major. I have minors in psychology and women's and gender studies, and I am flying to Morocco. Um, this is for my AN200 Anthropology class, Anthropology of Morocco. It's a faculty-led abroad class, so we're actually going to be taking a 10-day trip to Morocco. We're flying into Casablanca first, and then we have a connecting flight into Agadir. I'm Hilary Haldane. I'm super excited to be taking this fantastic group of Quinnipiac students to Morocco. It's the first time for all of them. They're going to have a wonderful time, and I'm just really looking forward to the adventure ahead with this great group of students. We have just landed in Casablanca. Look at this beautiful airport. We're about to hit our connecting flight to Agadir. We basically have a few hours of downtime so that we can recover and then we're gonna go get some dinner. We are here during Ramadan. Ramadan is a holiday in the Islamic community. Those who are celebrating will fast from sunrise to sundown. And then when the sun sets, they break the fast with this meal. We learned that it also includes fasting of the mind. It's kind of this idea that you expel all intoxicating thoughts from your mind. So it's really like a spiritual cleansing holiday and it's known as the holy month. We are back at the hotel. I'm gonna get some sleep and we'll see you all tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It's our second day here. I just want to kind of talk a little bit more about what we're doing here and how this course works. So we are taking extensive field notes. Um, as we go through our days, I have my field notebook, which you'll probably see a lot of. Um, and then while we're here, we are supposed to be on a radio silence, kind of. So no phones, no social media. We're not allowed to post anything. Just documenting everything in our field notebook and, of course, for you all. Um, and then when we get back, we're compiling an ethnography, like true anthropologists. So we get to pick an aspect of Moroccan culture that we find particularly interesting. Um, we could do anything from the architecture to the food. Um, I will probably do something related to the gender dynamics, as I do as a women's and gender studies minor, um, but I'm not quite sure yet. And what we're actually starting today. So we're partnering with the Darcy Hamad Ethnographic Field School. We are actually going to be working with them through the duration of the trip. We're going to be taking classes, but this field school really focuses on um, conservation, sustainability, as well as the race and gender dynamics. And so we'll be learning about all kinds of stuff. I'm really excited to take you guys with me. We're now walking to the Darcy Hamad Field School. It's about a 20 minute walk and we're gonna get ready for our first lecture. We just spent the morning learning about Amazon culture. The Amazon people are the indigenous population of North Africa. And so we learned all about that this morning and we are now going to a museum um, that we can look at. She said mostly jewelry, um, but just some more uh, things to gather more about their culture. And Izzy is taking her field notes. Now we are going to visit the original ruins of the city. So it's part of the original walls. And so this is the only city with this long of history in the country that doesn't have an old Medina anymore. And it's also the reason why the, the Ufla has been preserved. There hasn't, this hill has not been developed and you won't see apartment complexes surrounding it because it's considered a sacred site after the amount of deaths that occurred here. So we are on an adventure. We are going to discover the beach because we have some free time before dinner. Greetings from Moroccan beaches. Woo! Much clearer water than New Jersey, I do have to say that. And the sand is incredibly soft. No surprise, we are on a camel. We're on a camel. <laughs> wait, and the girls are in front of us too. This is wild, yes, yes. Hey. Oh, wait. oh my gosh, it's very rough. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Good morning, it is day three. Today we are going to do a crash course in Derija, which is a dialect of Arabic that we're going to be learning. I don't know. Which one? 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 We are leaving Darcy Hamed right now. We are headed to the market with a souk and we are going to do some observing. Um, you know, the marketplace is kind of like a 
they described it as like a microcosm of the city. Um, so we're gonna observe all these different interactions. We're also gonna try our hand at haggling from the little dairy job we learned this morning. There are over 3,000 vendors. There's all different kinds of things from clothing to jewelry to food. Bargaining is a really important cultural element here in Morocco. You know, in the United States, when we're purchasing things, we interact with the good, but here we interact with the vendor. Okay, so we are back in the hotel for good now. So we had dinner and then we worked in partners to start talking about our ethnography projects that I kind of alluded to before, um, just to start brainstorming and getting an idea of what we want to focus on. So we're actually going to get some sleep now because we have another early morning tomorrow. Um, we're starting, I think, with another Derija crash course, so hopefully we'll get to work a little bit more on our Derija and our Arabic. Um, this is the promenade, um, boardwalk, where we visited a few days ago. That was kind of the old city of Agadir. Um, those were the original walls of the city, and now this is kind of the new city. Good morning, it is Saturday. It is day five. Today we are going to visit a farm. So we learned about the Amazigh people, the indigenous people of the Northern African region. Today we're actually going to visit an Amazigh family. Yeah, so the, the reason that there is, a, there is this sink is that uh, in Moroccan hospitality that the guest is not allowed to go inside the house. Mm -hmm. That's considered rude. Like you serve him everything in, in, his, uh, in his room. Good morning everyone, it is Tuesday, it is day 8. We have just had breakfast at the foundation in Ifni and today we are hiking up to their fog collection project. So it's going to be a two, roughly a two and a half hour hike up a mountain. We are about 3,900 feet up, um, about 4,000 feet above sea level. And these are the fog catching nets. This is actually called the cloud fisher. And Tasneem is just going to kind of give a little overview of how this technology works to harvest the fog. And so the idea was to take fog collectors, which were previously made of rushel mesh, which is the material generally potato sacks and onion sacks are made out of, um, and so a food safe material that is put up on rods like this. Uh, but the difference between that and this model is that there are these bungee cords that move with the net. So in time of intense wind or when the clouds are flowing through very intensely, they move with it and there's not as much water loss. It also means that there's not as much maintenance done on the part of our staff to keep the nets up. Um, and there's very, yeah, there's very little maintenance actually. Um, so those are the major advantages of this. In addition to, in general, efficient, more efficient harvesting. So if you come closer, you can see that there are these sort of hair-like netting that catches really, really tiny particles. And on the other side, there's PVC, a food safe PVC that allows the condensation to drip down smoothly into the gutters. And this is really interesting too. Um, we were learning about this earlier. This is kind of a biomimicry technology. And so this is sort of modeled after cacti and um, other plants that sort of have similar fibers and use that technology to kind of store water. And so I think that's really, really cool. Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday. It is day nine. And that means it is our last full day here in Morocco. And I am extremely sad, um, but we are about to head to the foundation for breakfast. And then we have a historical tour of City of Fee. Tonight, we're actually celebrating with Darcy Hamid. Um, it is the 10th anniversary of their ethnographic field school, which is really, really cool because the first program that they hosted was with Quinnipiac. So it's very timely that we are here now and we get to celebrate that with them. Happy birthday, dear EFS. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yeah. The amount of knowledge that I've acquired while I've been here is just really, really mind-blowing. So I'd like to say shukran, which is thank you and Terry Shah to all of you. Thank you so much for watching. It's been fun. <laughs>